Here's something I didn't expect out of this year. I'm actually enjoying Overwatch. I know, I know, complete and utter heresy. But seriously, this is a really well-made game. There are balance issues here and there, and all the bugs that come with, well, pretty much any new release these days. But Overwatch 2 is, dare I say it, fun. It's got satisfying gameplay, a variety of characters, maps, and game modes, and it's an absolute blast to play with your friends. And don't even get me started on the new characters. Sojourn is absolutely disgusting and needs a nerf, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to enjoy her while I can. In addition, my man Ramatra is an absolute blast so far with his punchy mode and crazy ass brawling potential. And believe it or not, he's not even OP. And Kiriko? Well, she's a high skill cap support that can dual DPS characters and has the ability to get in and out of pretty much any situation she wants. So let's just say there's a reason I got her weapons gold. Overall, the game's just got such a satisfying feel compared to the first one. You can carry if you're good enough, and with the new 5v5 format and the near obliteration of crowd control abilities, the gameplay loop is just beyond solid. It's been a while since I've had a game where all my friends can just come together and have a good time playing it. In fact, it kind of reminds me of another game that came out around the same time last year. Hey guys, you remember when Halo Infinite was popular? Because now it's not even breaking the top 100 on Steam. That's kind of crazy. I wonder what happened to it. Anyways, yeah, Overwatch 2 reminds me a little bit of Infinite. A beloved franchise comes out with a new entry into the series that fixes a lot of the issues that the player base had has super crisp and modernized gameplay, and comes out with some new game modes that are pretty well received. Both of these games should be absolute juggernauts of the FPS industry, but one is pretty much dead in the water after a year, and the other is already starting to lose a bit of steam. Why is that? The answer is actually pretty simple. The progression, or uh, the lack thereof. But to understand just how underwhelming the progression for both of these games are, we first got to take a look back at their predecessors. Halo Reach was one of those games that shaped my childhood. The tragic story, the engaging gameplay, and the creativity it inspired with all its in-game creation tools, it was all amazing. But what stuck out to me in Halo Reach was the way players progressed through its leveling system. There was a certain respect given to high-level players, and it wasn't just because the number next to their name was higher than everyone else's. It was how the ranks were named, the badges they were given alongside them, and most importantly, it was the kick-ass, insanely customizable armor that those players were given. Whenever I saw someone with a skull helmet, massive f**k-off armor, and a blue flame around their head, the first thought that came to mind was, damn, this dude is a certified gamer. I hope I get there someday. And that feeling was what made me log on a lot of days, even if I wasn't too jazzed about the other aspects of the game. Now, looking forward to Infinite, we got, uh, an in-game store where you can pay for all of the cool cosmetics and a battle pass where you can earn some more cosmetics from. Either way, you gotta pay for the cool stuff. Knowing that someone just paid for their cool-ass armor rather than earning it really does kind of take the impact out of seeing a dude wearing some dope-looking cosmetics. Not only that, but where are the levels? 
No battle pass level, you do not count. Go sit in the corner. There wasn't even match performance experience in the game until very recently. Instead, you had to complete obtuse challenges that actively made the game less fun to play. I can't believe I gotta say this, but challenges that are essential to progression shouldn't actively hinder the way you play. The worst thing is that under all that garbage is such a good Halo game. And when it shines, it's incredible. It's got everything you'd want from a Halo sandbox. But most players need more of a reason to sign on than that. Progressing in a game feels good, and when your game doesn't do that well, people lose a really good reason to log on. As for the original Overwatch, I can't believe I'm saying this, but uh, the loot box system was better. It gave players a great reason to log on every day, even for just one game to get that daily loot box. And in the later years of the game, you even got loot boxes just for being a good teammate via the endorsement system. They were some of the most generous boxes in the industry, and if you played consistently, you really had no reason to buy them from the in-game store. You either got all the stuff you wanted from the boxes themselves, or you could just buy them with all the coins you got from the duplicates. And when you wanted something to show off your commitment to the competitive side of the game, there were gold weapons that could only be earned through either a whole lot of comp grinding, or just getting good at the game and climbing the ranks as high as you could. After a while, these started to become a little less meaningful, but Regardless, it showed a player's time commitment and their love for a specific hero. Now, moving on to Overwatch 2. This system, just like Infinite, is a husk of its former self. Skins that were once given out like candy now cost $10. Want an emote for your favorite character? That'll be five bucks, please. Or maybe, God forbid, you want a new legendary skin. Well, That'll be $25, but don't worry, that's discounted. See, we bundled it with a bunch of other stuff so it's a better deal for the player. No, you didn't. You put a bunch of items that you can't even buy anywhere else into one package and called it a discount. There aren't even levels anymore. Seriously, what is up with these games and taking away account levels? Battle Pass levels are no substitute for this either. God damn it, I thought I told you to stay in the corner. I mean, at least gold weapons are still here, and titles are a neat idea. I just wish they weren't so heavily tied to the Battle Pass. And the ones that aren't don't really have clear descriptions of how to get them either. One game, I asked a guy who had the Medic title how they got it, and they didn't even have a clue. Okay, look, I cannot reiterate this enough. This is a fun game. But good progression equals good player retention. It's as simple as that. So it's good to see that, a season in, Blizzard might actually be getting that. A post from the game's new executive producer showed some pretty promising stuff for the future of Overwatch. It seems like they might actually be getting just how important it is to feel like you're making some progress in a game, even if you're playing like garbage. There's going to be free event skins, great, and more Twitch drops, meh, in the short term, and battle pass changes and gameplay focused challenges in the long term. Though these things definitely should have just, you know, launched with the game, it's nice to see that there's a brighter future over the horizon. The release of season two shows at least some progress in the right direction, but not nearly enough. Free items as login bonuses and slightly more rewarding battle passes are not enough to fix the fundamental issues Overwatch has with its progression. There needs to be more, like a lot more. Dedicated players need ways to get skins they want without having to play for seven months. Seriously, who thought this was a good idea? And they can't just be some random shit that everybody gets just for logging on or watching a Twitch stream. People need to be able to work towards specific skins that they want, not just what happens to be provided to them from the battle pass or rando promotions. Maybe, if we're lucky, these problems will be solved later on when they introduce those challenges they've been talking about in the dev blogs. But only time will tell just how generous, or greedy, Blizzard is willing to be here. These next couple of seasons are do or die for Blizzard. 
I doubt many people are going to be in a rush to tune in for season three of a game that had two shitty seasons to start out with. Overwatch has been well out of the minds of the general gaming public for a while now. This is their big return and frankly, their last chance to do what they gotta do to right this ship. It's time to make Overwatch the juggernaut that it should be. So please Blizzard, make Overwatch 2 less like this and more like this.